So, hi everyone, happy greetings. Happy Friday, I'm Crystal Foreman, the owner and educator of Holistic Wellness and Health, where we make healthy living easy, nutritious, delicious, and fun, with a focus on plant-based foods, to help you live a healthier, compassionate, and more vibrant life. So today, you can tell we're not in our normal um, kitchen spot, which is totally cool. Um, so I just have this like weird background, but it's all good. So today we are going to make sauteed kohlrabi. If you are watching this live, put in hashtag live, say hello, let me know you're here. If you're watching this as a replay, put in hashtag replay, tag me, let me know you're here as well. So um, we are broadcasting on the Black Vegetarian Society of Maryland's Facebook page, as well as Holistic Wellness and Health's Facebook page and YouTube channel. So if you know someone who would like to watch these cooking videos, they're not on Facebook, they can check me out on YouTube. So this here is a kohlrabi. It looks a lot like a turnip. It's actually known as a German turnip, even though it is not um, a turnip, but it is in the brassica family. It is related to our collard greens, kale, um, broccoli, cauliflower, all of those things. So I know this is a little weird background. I think y'all can see this. Okay, so this veggie is highly underrated. A lot of people are scared of it because it looks different. It's not something most people were raised on, but it's often found at farmer's markets and CSA shares. So I, I received this today in my Moon Valley Farm CSA share, and I was excited to see it because last year I didn't see any farms with this. And I've been eating this for about seven years, and last year was like first year I didn't get any, so I was really excited to see it this year. So we have stalks on here, the leaves, and the bulb. All of this is edible. Just going to start taking off the leaves. Just use your hands and snap it off. Hi, Emma. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've got a lot of hair. Very much so. Happy Friday. Yeah. So we're just taking off our stems here. We're going to save the leaves. So this dish, we're going to cook all of this. Leaves, stem, and our bulb. So let me go in and just change our camera angle so that you all can see what I'm doing with the bulb here. So um, usually people will peel it. This is kind of nice spring tender, so it's not too tough, but I'm going to go in and peel it anyway. You can use a knife to peel it or a vegetable peeler. I'm just going to use my veggie peeler just because it's a little faster to do. And just go all the way around, taking off the outside parts. So kohlrabi comes in white or like a, this greenish color as well as purple. Usually you'll see the purple in the fall, but you can find it this time of year as well. There's not much difference in the taste um, between the kohlrabis, but um, they make, make a different presentation in your dish. So you can eat this raw, like as is. Um, you can slice it up, julienne it, make little chunks of it and put it in, um, like make it a salad or pickled. So we're gonna take off, this is the base here, the root part, we're gonna cut that off. So all of this can be used for our soup stock. Hi, Adrian. Yes, yeah, it's great to get from the farmer's market. Yeah, this usually, I mean, unless you go to like an organic store, you usually don't see this too many places. Um, so I'm just going to slice right down our center here. And now I'm just going to have my nice flat surface. And I'm just going to slice, thinly slice through. The thinner you slice it, the faster it'll cook. You can really do this whatever size you want. Some people cube their kohlrabi, but because this is a saute and I don't want it to take too long, I'm just going to thinly slice. So it's about mm, a little less than a quarter of an inch, about an eighth of an inch thick. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to cut off that part. Just slice right through. So it's great to have like a nice flat surface um, on your kohlrabi to actually bring stability and make it easier to cut through. All right, so that is done. We have our leaves here. So like I said, we're gonna use all of this. 
We're going to use the stems as well. Some recipes, they take the stems off and then just like use it for soup stock or saute in a different way, like with other veggies, but I'm actually going to put it all together. This is like very low waste crop. You can use all of it. So I love it. So now I'm going to take my leaves, which look a lot like our collards, collard greens, and just place them on top of each other. So these are a lot more tender than collards. So that's one of the reasons why I don't mind leaving our stalks in. But that's completely up to you. Definitely will add some crunch. So I'm just placing them all on top of each other. And I'm going to roll it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to cut it in half. Some of these leaves are a little big. And then I'm going to roll it. I'm, and I'm rolling lengthwise. And then I'm just going to thinly um, slice through, almost like Julian, Julian style. So for those who haven't had kohlrabi, the bulk part tastes a lot like like broccoli stem, but like a lot more flavorful and slightly sweet. It has a great crunch to it as well. So that is all of our kohlrabi. I'm going to add some green onions. These came from the Plantation Park Heights Urban Farm um, from their produce box that they do every Friday from 12 to 6 p.m. Eastern time. So definitely check that out if you are in the area. I'm just gonna slice through. You can use red onion, white onion, yellow onion, whatever you have on hand. I'm just trying to use up the produce I have available. Just cutting right on through. So I first had Carl Robbie six years ago um, as part of a CSA share um, at Park Heights Community Health Alliance. And when I first got it, I had no idea what it was or how to cook it up. And so I realized like um, after leaving it in my refrigerator for a couple of weeks that if I was having trouble figuring out what to do with all this produce, the other members probably were as well. So I started doing cooking demos. Um, you know, for our CSA members originally, initially, and then people started asking me if I could go to their churches and community centers to do cooking demos. And I was like, sure. So from there, that's how um, Holistic Wellness and Health as a business got started. Um, first, it was just something I was doing, volunteering mostly, but then it became um, much more. So this veggie, means a lot because it actually helped me get started. So um, I'm using grapeseed oil and I'm just coating the bottom of my cast iron um, frying pan. So if you don't have cast iron, you can definitely use um, stainless steel. I'm not a fan of nonstick, but if that's what you have available, then use what you have. Um, I don't like nonstick just because um, if you scratch it, it starts to release chemicals, um, which have been shown to be carcinogenic. So. Not a fan necessarily. So we have our green onions here. I'm going to put it in our oil, which is heating up. You can also use butter for this. That's completely fine. And I am going to stir this around a little bit. And I'm going to put my kohlrabi slices just back down. So my goal is just to brown them a little bit on each side and then I will add the leaves. You can really season this up how you want. Most people are very simple with the seasonings, um, salt, pepper, whatever oil you're cooking in and that's really it. <laughs> it's pretty simple. I'm going to add um, some additional spices today and I really say base it on what flavors you like. So if you like spicy, add some red pepper flakes to it. If you like um, savory, you can add nutritional yeast to this. You know, just make it your own and play with the flavors of this. So you can totally eat this just like this and put it in a dip as well and eat it raw. So it's a really cool veggie. 
For those who are just joining in, we are cooking up our kohlrabi that we received from the CSA share from Moon Valley Farm. The lighting is interesting today. So, I'm going to go and add my stems in just because they're a little tougher. Adding our stems. So does anyone have any questions? Okay, by the way, my shirt, um, plant pusher is from my friend Nicolo Massa. He is a um, entrepreneur who he basically sells these shirts, and for each shirt that is sold, um, a vegan meal is donated. So I love his mission, I love what he's doing, um, and I love this shirt too. I get a lot of compliments on it. I have um, a few. I have the sweatshirt too. You've probably seen me wear the sweatshirt like when foraging. So just setting this up. I'm going to add some pink Himalayan salt. So I got this bag from the Dollar Tree. But I've seen the same bag at a lot of the um, traditional stores as well. And I need that. So I'm not going to measure measure today just putting a little in the hands that's really just enough to sprinkle on top of what you have available so the calrabis i'm using are kind of medium small they can actually get as large as a cabbage and they can get quite large Add my salt in i'm going to add a little bit of black pepper as well really just enough to coat this is about an eighth of a teaspoon not even and i'm going to add some granulated garlic the garlic powder very similar just enough to kind of season on and then just stir it all together does anyone have any questions about paul robbie is it this it's called k-o-h-l-r-a-b-i and like I said earlier, you can eat it raw, you can saute it, boil it, roast it, and mash it, bake it. Some people um, blanch it before doing this, but it's totally up to you. It's starting to pop a little bit. So you can kind of see it's already starting to brown. It's one of the things I like about cast iron. Um, it browns things quickly and nicely. I usually don't take it on cooking demos because it's extremely, it's an extremely heavy pot. But it's great to cook in um, for even cooking as well as for getting some extra iron in your diet. I'm just going to let it cook a couple more minutes before I put our leaves in. Let me just bring this up for a second. All right. So does anyone have any questions um, about kohlrabi or brassicas in general? Um, these leaves. Oh, feel free to ask. I'm here. So um, if you are watching this on the replay, just make sure you um, tag me so that I'll actually see the question or comment and I can reply. So the leaves here are very high in vitamin A and C and vitamin K as well. So vitamin K is very important for our blood clotting. Um, so when you cut yourself, um, you need to make sure you have vitamin K in your body to help you actually stop bleeding. The vitamin A is great for our skin. Um, it's good to get internally for like eczema, acne, and of those conditions. I'm going to add our leaves in here. And keep that going. This is also high in B6 and fiber as well. So all of the brassicas are pretty high in fiber, which is great for our digestive system and our digestive health. If you feel like you need to, you can add more seasoning. Um, after you add the leaves, just give the taste see if it's necessary. And the leaves don't take too long. So it doesn't take as long to cook like um, collard greens, but it does have a similar flavor. Yeah. Hey, Tiara. Thanks for commenting and tuning in. So I'm actually using... Um, some green onions from our produce box at the Plantation Park Heights Urban Farm, and I'm cooking up kohlrabi. So I'm really excited to have this tonight. Um, this has been the first time I've seen it in a while. So 
This is going to be part of dinner. And this is National Salad Month. So you can check out the salad recipes on the website. I will um, pair this with some chickpea salad and then some salad that we um, received from the produce box as well. So there's carrots in the box um, and some other things as well. So carrots, lettuce, I'm a head of lettuce as well. So all of that's going in. Okay, I love you too, Tierra. Yes, I love Plantation Park Heights and all of the work that they're doing in the community to help um, alleviate food insecurity, as well as um, just providing a nice safe space in the community for people to go to, a nice green space. They're providing oxygen and, you know, community, straight space to get your produce. So make sure that you um, check them out. They do sell produce as well, um, usually around 12 p.m. Someone's there, um, definitely Monday through Saturday. So, but you can call or check um, their Facebook page to make sure. Um, and just, you know, they have a whole lot of things growing right now. So definitely check that out. It's delicious. But we brought the things inside. Oh, we're deep frying. Yeah, so you can actually um, kind of deep fry this and treat it like a potato. You can treat it like totally like a baked potato or um, sauteed potatoes as well as potatoes and onions. There's a lot of different things. So I've turned my heat off. I just didn't, it was getting pretty hot here. I'm just going to turn it back up just a little bit. But basically, the dish is done. We have nice brown pieces here, and our greens are getting nice and tender as well. I'm just going to let it cook up just a little more. Let me bring it down for you all to see. So this is our sauteed kohlrabi. We use the whole plant, other than the very, very bottom of our of the bulb there, but we use all of it including the stems for this dish. So this is ready to be served. Happy Friday, Leia. It's good to see you. Let's back up. So any questions, comments about anything? So if you are um, tuning in, um, just tuning in, we just sauteed up some kohlrabi. This is our kohlrabi. So um, you might see it definitely at farmers markets and CSA shares. Um, sometimes you'll see it at like specialty grocery stores. But yeah, um, this is an awesome veggie and I love this. So I'm so excited to have it. Make sure you all um, are subscribed to our Facebook page as well as um, join our Facebook group. Let's bring it up. And make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. So it's just youtube.com forward slash holistic wellness and health. And make sure you're following us on Instagram and um, let us know what you want to see made. So if there's anything particular that you um, are interested in seeing me make in a healthier manner, or if there's a veggie that you're receiving that you're not familiar with what to do with it, um, definitely let me know. And I will work it in. I'm just going to check our comments one more time. So what does this taste similar to? Um, Leah's asking. So this is the bulb part. Reminds me a lot of broccoli. Um, but it's a little sweeter. Um, definitely has a nice crisp to it. You can eat it raw or cooked, sauteed, mashed. I've made a, a mash with this and cauliflower. Just kind of like uh, mashed potatoes, which is absolutely delicious. And you can eat the leaves as well. Um, the leaves are kind of like a tender, not as like pungent collard, collard flower. So I'm sorry, collard green, collard green. So in the stems, like you can actually like just break it off and like dip it in peanut butter or whatever sauce you want um, or dressing you want and eat it raw like that. You can put the leaves in your salad. Um, I kind of find it a little, little, tough, but it's not too tough. So it's up to you. But you can do that as well. Um, so yeah, all of it is edible. You can, some people cook it separate. So they'll cook the leaves separate from the bulb. So it depends on what you're making. So if I'm making like the mash, I'll just use my bulb here. But you can um, do so much with this. 
and it's an underrated veggie. So I'm hoping to see more people use it and not be afraid to use it. Um, and yeah, and just have fun with it. Like try different things. And if you try a different recipe, let me know. You've never had this. Yeah, I had, I was saying earlier, I had this for the first time um, as part of a CSA share um, in Park Heights, like about six years ago. And I really had no clue what this thing was. And it sat in my refrigerator for two weeks. Um, and so I was like, man, if, if I'm having trouble um, figuring out what to do with this, I knew others were too. But I've been cooking since I was a kid and cooking veggies as well as other things. Um, but it's, this just looks so foreign. And all it is is a brassica. It's the cruciferous vegetable. It's in the same family as broccoli and cauliflower and kale and collards. So it's really not scary. It just looks different. Um, yeah. So definitely, if you see it, give it a try um, and let us know what you think. And um, if you find any cool recipes, share that with us as well. So thank you all so much for joining me. I will see you all Monday for our Live at Five. And of course, every Friday, Live at Five using our local produce from our farms and our CSA. Tomorrow, I will be on location at White Lock Community Farm using produce um, from the farm there. And I will be there at 11 a.m. Eastern time. The farm stand opens at 10. So from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., you can go there and pick up produce and support local economy and local farms, urban farms as well. So I'll see you um, there at 11. I will probably not um, film for Facebook, but I will probably do like something for Instagram um, for the cooking demo I'm doing there using um, sorrel and niece. Um, what else did I just pick up from them? Oh, and um, kale. So we'll be doing some cool dishes with that as well. So I will see you all on Monday. And make sure you subscribe to all the channels. And this one go away. All right. Peace, love, and blessings, everyone. Take care.